inch. Yeah. Hey, up, guys? Good morning. It's uh, 8 a.m. on a Saturday. Morning. Uh, we're supposed to get snow today. I know we were watching the news yesterday, and I seen a couple of people. Uh, the Midwest Canada, you guys are supposed to get slammed with snow. Uh, we're supposed to get maybe one, two, three inches. So, I mean, not enough, hopefully, not enough for us to really do much per se as far as, you know, operating a machine and even getting out those supercharged Arians. I mean, it is operable. Um, I finished up the electrical work kind of sort of yesterday. It's working. It's not perfect, but it's there. Uh, we got one viewer. Say hello. Good morning. <laughs> Where are you from? And are you getting snow? <laughs> that That's the important part. And are we close enough? Do you need us to come? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, as far as that goes, I mean, this week has been kind of sort of okay. I mean, Good week. Can you tell he's a little, like, down in the dumps? I mean, we have no snow. So, I mean, there really isn't, you know, much for us to do. But I mean, you've been wrenching. Yeah, I mean, obviously. You've been picking. Yeah. Way too here. I've been picking. So, I mean, listen. Life is good. So, I mean, I went on a couple of picks. I mean, nothing crazy. I didn't even get a chance to uh, post them on my Instagram because usually that's what I kind of do. And my Instagram wasn't, uh, I don't know, I felt like it was kind of like boring this week. You've been I mean, boring this week. <laughs> Guys and ladies, your Instagram, your YouTube, it's only what ever energy you bring to it. So if you're down in the dumps, your social media is going to be down in the dumps. So we need to bring this guy. Look at this. He's down in the dumps. Good morning. Good morning, Red Oaks Mower. How are you? So where are you from and do you have snow? And thank you for joining us this morning. Okay. Maybe there's a little bit of lag. And we understand, everyone. It is pretty early here in New York. Oh, yeah. You'll never get to Yay! <laughs> Texas. So you never. So I'm trying to remember. I love Texas. Did you find my channel? We were going. Oh, Sam Sandoval. How are you? So you should have got your giveaway tool. Correct? Oh. This is the Sam. Yes, because I heard Hi, from Sam. I heard from Felis and I heard from Brandy that that her and her husband got the tool. So it's Sam should definitely excellent. Get Yay! So, Sam, what color did you end up getting? I didn't get the details. His first pick was orange, but Felis took orange, so he ended up with red. They're all great. It's just a color. Excuse me. Excellent. In the words of Martin Luther King, coming up, colors mean nothing. So anyway, um, yeah, so it's like I've been working on lawnmowers, which is like ridiculous because it's mid-January, and I've been going on a couple of picks. So, I mean, it's it's kind of tough for really for me to say. A lot of landscapers have a lot of their equipment for sale at, you know, pretty good prices. I have a feeling, I mean, I don't think it's, un think it's uncomfortable for me to ask, that a lot of them... Uh, either didn't prepare themselves for the kind of or lack of winter that they're going to have. So I've been buying, you know, a couple of really nice pieces of equipment, especially if you guys seen that still BR 800, that's literally been only out for a year. And I got that, you know, at a good price, just picked up a steel chainsaw and a hedge trimmer for a really good price. And then when I was working in the driveway, you know, she called me like all excited saying that, you know, she picked up a backpack blower. Off Hold of on. Echo. Hold on. Mick, from across Hi, the Hi, Mick. First of all, I'm going to have to stop you. Can you tell I have a little bit more energy today than he does? And I, and I was teaching the littles all week long. Can I please give my story a little bit more emphasis than you're giving it? 
Yeah. So in the words of the Golden Girls, picture this. I'm at work and mind you, remember last time you were on live, we were talking about how you to support each other. I am always looking, whether it's garage sailing, let go, Craigslist. I don't know what you have over the pond if you have like a Craigslist or let go or what secondhand sale sites that you use. But if I have an opportunity, like, of course, my lunch, I'm just like him. I'm not at work to be doing anything but my job, but my lunchtime is my lunchtime. And so I got so excited because, of course, I'm looking for him. And I got ridiculously excited when I saw this backpack lower, but the price wasn't right. And so I started negotiating. And let me tell you, don't be fooled. I can negotiate like nobody's business. And like he was saying, people want to sell right now. They know they're not holding on to their items. They know that cash is king. And share the punchline of the story. $200 backpack blower? Psh, I'm not paying that. It's not, even worth, it. it's not even worth 200 Wasn't even worth 200 This thing is a complete POS. She ended up paying 100 bucks for it. It's a still BR700. It looks like somebody threw it off the back of a truck. Ouch. You're killing my story here. The thing's held, to get, the thing's held, together, with, the thing's held together with zip ties. It needs a band-aid or two. But that's why you, my friend, have all the skills. No. Nothing no. he can't make look no. pretty. No. So, I mean, I'll feature it on the channel, obviously. I was just... Man, you're killing me! <laughs> so literally, it's a still BR seven hundred. It, it <laughs> so so stills so stills sell obviously. So hot sellers here in the states are a Red Max number one. Yeah, Echo number two, especially here in New York, still is up there too. But they're kind of mm. few and far in between. Um, one because. You can't walk into, you know, you can't even do that with Red Max. You can't walk into like a Home Depot or Lowe's and say, hey, give me, you know, a, a sale. You have to go to, you have to order it online or you have to go to an authorized dealer and get still. Now, I don't like working on sales because one, because it's like a dealer only, their parts diagrams are not the greatest. And it's really hard for me to order parts. I literally have to walk into a mower shop. And or a specialty shop and get parts. And sometimes the parts for them are mucho dinero and they kind of kill the deal. So I try and stay away from still unless it is running and operating the way it should. Unless it needs like a little bit of tinkering. This one needs a lot. A lot. So I mean, stick stay tuned to the channel. We'll be posting. Like I said, it literally looks like it was thrown off the back of a truck. She said it was running. Mm -hmm. Um not when I seen it, but I ended up, you know, getting it to run because ugh, just it's terrible. It's terrible. So I imagine that the person who she got it from, I mean, you know, I get I get red max blowers from other landscapers. Once the once the backpack blower starts looking like a you know what, all right, they're just like, we can't have my crew walking around like that. So they'll offload it. And if you guys see my channel, I'll fix it up, you know. I'll throw a new cover on it, some new tubes, refreshing it, throw some stickers on it, and the thing literally looks um, brand new. All right, so here we go. So Echo's all the way. So I start off with an Echo blower, and then I transition to a Red Max that I had for like two, three years. And then from there, I transmission to a bigger Husqvarna, which is the same as Red Max. And then I sold my Red Max that I had for two years for more money than what I paid for it. So it's perfect. So believe it or not, I'm going to be releasing another video. When I got the Still Magnum 800BX, I did like a blow off. Was I going to keep the steel or keep the Husqvarna? So you guys have to stay tuned for that. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I like my Husqvarna. I kept it. The still, you know, that that's long gone already. So I'm behind on videos, but, you know, I'll get that going. Mm -hmm. um, so I know, Mick, you guys don't see snow. Your um, Red Oaks is in uh, Texas. Texas. You guys will never see snow. He <laughs> said... Get a still and attach two chain and sell it off as an anchor. Really? Oh. So, so I'm surprised. 
So I am really, really surprised because, you know, yeah. Jeremy and you guys are like, you guys should have an easily better flow of parts, um, quicker. Because um, I remember I had to do, um, like, on a leaf blower vac, you know, the like a three-in-one, the flywheel, which doubles up as, I mean, the fan, which doubles up the things to mulch up the leaves, that was a special order part from Germany. It didn't come from, I had to, like, wait, and I'm like, oh, forget this. No more still. No more still. I mean, it, someone even brings me to work on it. I kind of tell them, like, you know, listen, I can't tell you when it will be done because, you know, parts, 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 parts. How are we doing getting parts from the current person? The so current place, I should say. When you picked up the other parts from the mower shop, that day you picked it up. We just placed that order. So hopefully it should be there within the week. I would say we just we just connected with a place locally where we both work. And um, I had to pick up parts for um, Pate's performance just the other day. Nicest guy running this shop. And they sell stills all day, every day at the shop. And the nicest guy there. So and nice connection. So the, the mower shop that he hooked up to, it's very close to my job. The mower shop's local to me. We just don't. Um, These guys are not nice guys. They're not. We just don't see eye to eye. No, they're um, rude. I've been banned from one of them. So, I mean, you know, that's life. So there goes, you know, that one. And I spoke about that, you know, on my channel about this one particular shop that um, they just refuse to do business with me. I don't and, think he and, likes your flipping. Yeah, we're not. We're not. Uh, we just don't see eye to eye. Yeah. So there's literally a, uh, a shop because we work near each other, like right almost in the middle. It's like a five minute drive. Those guys are very cool. They know exactly what I do. And I guess because we're so, I wouldn't say far away, like a 20 minute ride away. They don't have any hostility, no small comments, no remarks when I go to, you know, order parts. So, I mean, when I call them, they're very helpful. They know exactly who I am. And, um, and it's just a good feeling. Even when she went in there, she felt very well. Oh, it welcome. was great. I, I picked up the part. I was dressed from teaching that day. He said, uh, you do snow removal on the sign? I said, absolutely. We got talking. Um, I'm, I'm quite there a staple. There is no snow. Yeah. I'm a staple <laughs> in the community. I'm known in the community for what I do. And right away, the level of respect for him, myself, I said, you know what? If you can order everything from there from now on, I said, I would never mind going back there to pick up your parts. He was such a great stand-up guy. And he loves what this guy does. And this guy's running a shop doing the same thing. So the level of respect was great. It was yes. a nice experience. Yeah, so it definitely makes it uh, comfortable. And now that I have, you know, that, that new avenue, maybe I'll be open to maybe jumping in and diving into more stills and other projects that, you know, Touchy feely, you know. I stick to a certain, stick to certain brands, stick to certain things. I mean, we've spoken about this before. I mean, I've only had two lawn tractors here um, at the house on the channel. I've only featured one, and I literally bought it, kept it on the back of the truck, and I sold it within two three hours. Didn't even offload it, you know, off the truck. So I do not, you know, space is a factor. Gate size is a factor because if I can't keep it in my garage, I don't want it hanging out, you know, in the front because, you know, lawn tractors fetch, you know, a nice chunk of change. So I just can't have them rotting away. Especially this is a really, really nice machine. If you go to my channel, look at this Troy belt. Okay. Then the other, oh, actually, no, we had two lawn tractors. And then I found two lawn tractors in the garbage. Um, one, she came with the truck because I saw it and I'm like, you have to, she babysat me. <laughs> And it was a 30 inch yes. crash and one of the comes on it. And I got that to run, but the car kept, you know, crapping out. So we ended up selling it as is for a profit. And then another one tractor I found in the garbage. Um, we were going to sell that. I mean, this just needed too much work. Mm. Remember the old man who came? Oh, yes. So yes. Um, he is, I guess you would say, not like a caretaker for, he's a very active member for the church and he's an older gentleman himself. So there are, uh, what do they call them? parishioners? Parishioners, fellow members of the church who are older, unless you say their husbands passed away, so it's just the wife and their widows or whoever can't take care of their lawn, he'll go around on his free time and he'll cut and maintain their property for them. If you have to be a member of the church, obviously for you, you probably won't afford that to you. Yeah. But if you've been a long upstanding member, this old guy will go out there and just, you could I guess you could say doing, uh, God's work person. Just a beautiful person. So, and I will say, it's funny, 
I, I want to just give you some accolades for a moment. Jason has, um, over the course of his, his business, he has um, come across some really beautiful people who either have worked for their church or community centers who have, who have not just said that they have, they actually do. And he has really um, been a stand-up guy and, and fixed machines for them. He's donated machines for them. Um, and then there's also been those people who said, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fixing this for a church. Or I'm fixing this for, you know, a retirement home. And, and, and they've been speaking a line. And, you know, I, I'm so against things like that. You know, please say that you're, you're doing something like that. And you, you mean what you say. Um, because this guy's got a heart of gold and he'll a thousand percent give an arm and a limb to, to help a community center or church. But, but it, it really, you know how I feel about that. I, I, honesty is so huge to me. And um, Pat Chase Performance always goes out to help when they can. And um, you really have machines, fixes. Um, you're always giving back. I love that about you. So long story short, this guy was cutting someone's grass and he hit something and took out his lawnmower. So he was either going to use it for parts or try and fix this one and use the other. So literally we had nothing into this machine. I think he had to drive maybe like 10, 15 minutes away to get it. I mean, I looked at my wife, like sometimes we don't even need to uh, speak. We can just look at each other and we, and we kind of come from the same, you know, uh, foundation per se. She's a little bit more. I love getting. She's a little, she's a little bit more right warm hearted there. than me. She's a little bit more warm-hearted than me at times. So right then and there, I mean, just said, you know, go ahead and say, listen, man, you know, just, just take them over, help you get on to it. I mean, and, you know, that was it. Mick, I would love if you came to the States. I just got a new student from across the pond. Oh, she likes how you guys talk. I am obsessed. I Just so you guys know, I, um, I taught third grade for 11 years, and now I've been in kindergarten for this is my ninth year. So I've been in this for about 19 years now. I'm obsessed, Mick, with the accent. You can't help but fall in love with a five-year-old with your accent. So, Mick, if you want to come across to the States, we've got plenty of room for you to stay. Stay here for a while until you find a place. Our hey, home is your home. Jack Bray, where are you from and do you have snow? <laughs> <laughs> you just need a sign. So while, while Jack answers, right, so then we were talking about donating and stuff like that. So I forgot, I think Fearless or somebody else asked me in one of my videos, do I work on older equipment? Mm, good question. I absolutely will work on anything that comes through the driveway. Now, as far as flipping old equipment, you guys have seen in my older videos that I take older snowblowers and I will completely restyle, restore, take them down to the bits. That I'll take it. That's Mick Mower style. And then um, there's another guy, Archer's Garage, here actually local to me. He takes things down to the bare bones too. I haven't seen him take a snowblower down to the bare bones, but he literally will disassemble um, just like Mick down to the nut and bolt, you know, everything separate. He'll do that with the lawnmower. I've never seen him do that to a snowblower. I will do that to a snowblower. I will do a complete, you know, frame off restoration on an older machine. Now I get these engines from a local store. They come with a two year guarantee. And so that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I do that because, you know, it's also an easy sell. I'm taking an older machine that's literally worth almost nothing. And I'm turning this thing into like a four or $500 machine. Excuse me. And that's only because I take it down to the bare bones repaint it, restyle it. You know, if you guys seem like you guys watch my videos, I have like a certain recipe, right? Whatever color it is, black wheels, black wheels, and then tire chains. The black wheels really make the tire chains pop. And I kind of change the color scheme. I get rid of this rainbow of like three to four or five different colors on the machine. Drives me nuts. <laughs> Let's There's face it, no black's your favorite red. color Yeah, anyway. so black is my favorite color, absolutely. <laughs> but... When it comes to, you know, even my vehicles, you know, look at Mandingo. Mandingo's two colors, and it's eventually it's going to be one. It's all going to be black, right? You should see his closet. You look at my other truck that's buried in the uh, in the cover. I'll, maybe I'll do pictures on that. That's oh, completely, she's not buried. She's protected. She's completely all black. That's been like that for 10, she's 12 beautiful. years. And the Honda right now, because we got it actually when it's cold, that's driving me nuts that it's three to four different colors. That's going to be all blacked out, too. <laughs> 
So it's just insane. I love when we got married, you know, you sit in pre cana at the church and couples are talking, you know, you get to go through everything. What's your, what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? We get to things like colors. It's really not hard to figure out. This man loves black, everything. There's some really good questions, honey. Um, I love that there's so many people from across the pond, and I love that you're such a family. Um, I want to address one comment that my Texas friend Sam made. Um, you know what, Sam? Oh, okay. I love that that you know there's so many people out there that are in need, and I'm a firm believer that you know you do things as much as you can for other people within your restraint that you can do. Um, Jason, uh, Jason and I are very fortunate that we have so many beautiful people that are no longer with us here that are watching over us. I know he talked about our last giveaway, Grandma Brooklyn. Um, my mother um, has, I'm almost 40, and my mother hasn't been with me since I was 25, but she was... You want to talk about giving? He laughs that I give everything but the kitchen sink away. My mother was, ugh, she'd give you the shirt off her back. And she never had the opportunity to meet him. Mm. She would have loved every ounce of him. They were two peas in a pod. So I look at it. We have such beautiful people watching us. And I feel like with such beautiful people watching us, we've got to always do the right thing. And um, I just hope. We never do things in hoping that people do it in return. You can't do things with expectation, but um, I do hope we're doing the right thing. Um, that's how we try to live day to day. And um, you just hope that at the end of the day, you put your head on the pillow and you made good choices and you helped people when you could. And that, um, you know, there's just a little bit at the end of the road for us because our big one right now, um, as we spoke of in the giveaway, you know, there's some things that this man needs. You know, we need that 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 extra garage space put on for him, and um, <laughs> can't you know, fit twenty mowers. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> so we're working on that for this year. And we, as we mentioned in the last one, we'd like to uh, expand this pate family, um, and, and not just as much as you guys, but we'd love some littles running around. So we've been working on that for a long time. So a lot of practice. Send some love our way. <laughs> it's been a long time. So we hope that. Yeah, we hope the Lord blesses those who give. So we would love for you guys to send some well wishes our way. And um, that's all we ask. We don't ask for anything monetary. We don't ask for anything in return. Just well wishes and um, just positive energy our way. That's all. And this man just wants a little snow, too. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so then another thing I hooked up with. So I got a couple of older. I actually got an older Aryans. And uh, I didn't know you know, what to do with it. And ironically, just in, in conversation, I met, um, what is it? It was a Baptist church. It's a couple of towns out, maybe like a half hour away from here. They do snow removal as a fundraiser. Mm. So I got, you know, I got in contact with them. And what I ended up doing is I ended up donating, I think I donated up to four snowblowers to them, mm -hmm. but they were all older machines that either were abandoned by someone who didn't want to make the repair or just things that I've acquired. So they got two Arians and then um, a Roper, and then they also gave them, uh, I'm sorry, three machines, and I also gave them an old lawn boy two-cycle lawnmower. They were still great looking machines when you were done with them. Yeah, absolutely. But I, but you know what it is like I have a reputation I feel and I need to protect that at all costs. So you will rarely see me sell equipment that doesn't run. Okay. If I can't fix it per se, I'm gonna either end up donating it or scrapping it. It's very rare for me to sit there and, and, and inquire something and not sell it because if you could tell someone as is, even if it's running, some people just don't understand that concept. So to me, it's just not worth the headache. It's not worth ruining myself over anything because now with the internet, right? I mean, I sell everything through, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, Craigslist, let go, you know, offer up. I mean, she handles all that. I don't, you know, I do Facebook and, and Craigslist. She handles everything else. I don't have time or patience for that. You guys know how difficult it is dealing with the general public. Now talk about offer up and let go where they think 
that if you're asking, let's just say $800 for something, they think a $200 offer is realistic. And that just drives me, you know, Here, nuts. Here's the thing. Nuts. So it I does. can't deal with it. I it can't. Does. I can't. That's her. Nope. But nope. I, I under, you have to understand, I told him, you have to put yourself in the other person's shoes. No. People are no. forever. No. Common sense. Agree or disagree. No. People are always no. going to try to get a deal. Common you sense. Can't no. No. You can't They're take it personally. You can't take it personally. They're not getting a deal. They're I know. Heads. Do you see why? Do you see why I deal with the people? I'm getting <laughs> aggravated thinking about it, right? <laughs> I so deal you, with people. So you guys know, especially like Nick, right? You guys, you guys get a machine. I know. You put, you put your, you put your, whether you're spraying and praying or you're mix more in it, right? I mean, you put your your touch on it, you service it, you repair it. This machine is almost perfect, right? Mm -hmm. They're only trying to get, you know, fair market value. Mm -hmm. And then they try and offer you, let's just say, I told one mower for 200 bucks, right? Fully serviced, ready to go, beautiful, self-propelled. They want to offer you like 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? Like, no, that's why I can't deal with, that's why I can't deal with. Oh, Right, so Mick. Mick, I will eat my words when it doesn't sell, but trust me, my friend. And can we also add, Mick, the person delivered it to me. I didn't waste any gas getting there. And this man's going to have it up and going for pennies on the dollar. I guarantee, yes, yes, you paid, yes. You paid the parts bill. How much was the parts bill? $3 and change. That was no. Oh, you mean the other one? The other one. Damn. You didn't tell me all those parts were for that. <laughs> Make all the... Whoa, wait a second. How did I miss this? Pete, when did you enter? Good morning, Pete. How are you? I didn't see you come in. <laughs> How are you today? It's so good to see you. Good morning. So... <laughs> Low ballers. Yes. All day, every day. And um, believe it or not, on my Facebook page, I have a whole photo album called Another Day, Another Idiot. And it's me interacting with these morons. And I just, uh, they just send me through the roof. So where were we before you distracted me with low ballers? And, oh, oh also, I was just letting Nick know that we're going to sell it. It's going to be okay. Oh, and Nick, okay. I am redeeming myself right now. I'm currently working out a deal. I got a guy who either is coming today or possibly Monday um, for the 28 inch yard machine snowblower. Um, that one is at 800, 800 bucks. So um, that would be our first large snowblower. No, because over the summer I sold the areas from the collection. Well, I'm saying 000. right now. Right now. Right now. Yes. Yes. So yes, if yes. I can get that deal in motion right now, um, I've redeemed myself, Mick. He'll he'll let me sleep in the bed again tonight. And I was ready to drop prices. He had prices. me in the guest room last night. I was ready to drop prices. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I was ready to drop prices because it's mid January. <laughs> we haven't had anything and I have I have about three machines left over from last year. And I even went, remember, if you guys know, I was going on gambling. I hoarded a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of snowblowers. And believe it or not, um, I sold a lot, per se, um, between September and November. Remember, I blazed through all those snow commanders. But the problem was, as soon as I got empty space, I went out and I got more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I didn't tell you. I learned, but I didn't learn. So I was ready to drop prices. And believe it or not, a guy. Don't do it contacted me from Delaware. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the states, Delaware is a couple of states out. We have, we haven't traveled out of state to sell something, but we've had people it's come out of state. four and a half hours south of us. We've had people come to us to mm -hmm. buy something, which is fine. We, I love it. I think it's great. Um, but this guy was from Delaware and he was messaging me on my snapper snowblower that I had for, I think I had it up for eight, then I dropped it down to mm -hmm. seven. And uh, he asked, well, you know, what's the best, you know, picked up? Yeah. So literally I told him, listen, 500 bucks. I mean, because that's how, that's how, that's how it is. I mean, we're, we're not hurting per se, but we just want space. I just want space back. I mean, I can't have another year of looking almost at the same snowblowers. Yeah. You need so to, then, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> he was going to reach back out to me and let me know. He said that was okay. We agreed to that. He's going to reach out to me and let me know if, you know, when he can come down. Mm. So he went like laps a little bit. So I'm just like, hey, man, did you get my last message? Because the last message I gave him was an address. Now, obviously, thank God I don't give my home address, right? We spoke about this. We don't do home addresses anymore. We do someplace else. 
So he said that's three hours and 46 minutes. He had an accident um, with his legs and um, he doesn't feel comfortable taking the trip now. And I said, okay, that's fine. Like, listen, you know, I've made an executive call. I'm like, listen, I will deliver right to your front door for full asking price at 700. That's how much I really just wanted to get this out of my way. And I mean, even if I feel if I drop the price down to 500, no one's going to buy anyway. I mean, we're supposed to get snow today between 1 and 8 p.m., three inches. I mean, while the rest of the East Coast and Canada is getting dumped on, right? We're getting the tail end of the snow. We're getting like nothing. But apparently during the week, we're supposed to get six inches of snow at some point. And I don't even feel hopeful for that. I, I really, need, really don't. I still think we need to wait for February, March. Yeah, so Pete, so that's right. So Pete says money up front. Absolutely, Pete. So if you guys remember when I did the deal with, with Henry at Mowers and Blowers, he couldn't sell his snow blowing, he passed it on to me. We require money up front. So if this guy was going to do the snapper, okay, I wouldn't ask him to pay me in full up front. He would have to pay the delivery fee in full up front, and it's non-refundable. So even if he doesn't take the machine, we're still covered and compensated. I mean, it kind of sucks per se because it's three that three hours was it three oh, hours okay. and forty six yeah. minutes, right? So I was charging two hundred dollars for pickup and delivery. We're probably thinking, <laughs> says help this deep. So we're probably thinking it was a hundred dollars in gas and toll, and then a hundred bucks for us, which sucks. But I was going to fit in the Honda, so the Honda would have been two tanks of gas, so it'd been like sixty bucks, right? And then plus forty dollars in gas and tolls. I hope. I mean, forty dollars uh, in tolls. You're talking I about hope. the Delaware one. The Delaware guy. No, see, see, Pete, we we disagreed about the Delaware one. I thought it should have been more than just a delivery deposit for that one because going down to Delaware from here, the deposit. I mean, the the tolls, the gas, everything else is well over what our deposit was. So I was telling him he should have expected at least half up front. Um, because this guy sound a little little sketchy to begin with. You don't want to get four and a half hours down there and find out he doesn't want it, and all you got out of it was a fifty dollar or a hundred dollar delivery charge. Mm. Then you got to drive four and a half hours back. And um, I think you need to redeem me with Mick. Mick, I've gotten some great equipment over the years. Like I'm talking like free stuff. I got an Arian snowblower for 50 bucks that he's turned around and flipped for how many hundreds? Like, I, I've done really, really well, but it's going to have a tough skin. I can hang with the boys. Trust me. So we were going to do a member's bill today. And believe it or not, so there is this program that, you know, Mix uses called OBS. And I got it to work yesterday. But somehow, some way, it went, like, live. And there was another person there and I'm literally there with no shirt on no like literally and I'm just I'm like oh. so I switched it to private and I went to go use it today and I don't know how to get it off private so I have to figure that out so I was gonna feature um Thomas Andrews build and it he took two slow blowers and made them into one so obviously we're not gonna do that today because I was my backup plan was I printed out a picture and I was gonna show it actually you know what now uh, you know yeah we'll save that for another day so he put two snow blowers together then another person, what, what got me back on pace for my supercharged Arians build that I've been practically been doing for almost a year because there is no slow. I lost motivation. Dan, I think it was Dan Jack, excuse me, Dan Jackson viewed my videos, commented on them, and he literally, between asking me questions in like a couple of days period, he went out, bought the bought the engine, right? Did a bunch of work to it, got on a snowblower, and he's using it. And that got me feeling some type of way. And uh, he motivated me to finish it. So I went out, supercharged it, got that done, sorted out the electrical work. It's like 80% done. Oh, you know what? We got Sam here. So you guys were, and Red Oaks, yeah, Red Oaks is Sam. You guys that work on lawn tractors, okay? What is, I want an in an inline fuse, okay, for the lights and heated hand grips. I'm probably going to run them separate straight to the battery. When I run the inline fuse, what is the proper amperage for the fuse? Let's see. Nick was addressing. Use stream yard. Okay. That's so if you guys can help me out with that, because what happens is, is that, so my goal with the Arians, right, is make it as factory as possible. And 
if you guys seen the video, if you haven't, go on my channel. I mean, I did a couple of videos on it. The last one that I had is the engines mounted on there. Um, I forgot if it was wired or not, but um, I've had everything work. So 7.5 7 amp per circuit. Hold on. Okay, so 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 what happens is is that so originally, right? Arians, the generation that we have, I feel is personally the best generation of Arian snow blowers out there, and that's why we have ten of them, and it's just the two of us. They're just great machines. Okay, I think uh, at that point in time, I think Arians cut back because they realized they just really had so much. Their lines were so broad. Okay, and then they, they put it back down to what they have. But anyway, so I run, so we run, the first errands they ever got was an 1128. So the pro model would have key starter. Then they made another 11 and a half 28, which is 0.5 horsepower with the handbrake and skinny tires. Eh. I like I like the I like the 1128 that we run. Big fat tires. Like when you see the snowblower, right? You guys seen it. When people see this, so they know that that we mean business when we show up. When they see orange, they see this monster. I mean, they're like, whoa. My machine is <laughs> and beautiful. Yes. And these machines are absolutely unstoppable. So anyway, so we do snow removal as, you know, whatever, side hustle per se, another thing. It just, why not? We have all these machines. We got to use them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you have a proper machine set up, it's so much easier to, um, Go out and, and, and make money. Let the machine do all the work. You know, I when I when I sell mowers to certain people and even snowblowers, I tell them like, listen, I'm gonna use the snowblower to make money. And one guy even said, I'm gonna use the mower to feed my family over the winter. Is this a good machine? I'm like, yeah, it's a good machine. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like doing, you know, the same thing. Wow. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to add key start like the pro model because when we go snow removal, I got a bag of tools, extra recoils, extra shear pins, extra belts. We've never had a, a failure, and that's why we have a good reputation. We charge very good money for snow removal compared to what other people get. We're reliable. That's the only, that's the only thing you're getting with us, reliability. You got, we've gotten people where you know, they're promised snow removal, and the guy never shows up because they've had mechanical failure or they're just charging way too cheap, and they're just way above over their head. You know, we'll, we'll go up to a customer, and we'll drive away. Snow removal is a luxury. <laughs> they need to understand that, right? You know, Mandingo isn't cheap to own, operate, and insure. As you know, when you guys have a snowblower per se, it doesn't matter what kind of snowblower you have. It's expensive. You got to maintain it. And you got to store it. So I do all of our scheduling. So basically, either they'll reach out to him or they'll reach out to me. Or if they'll reach out to him and he'll, he'll revert them to my number. And when I schedule, um, basically, I'm up front right away. I tell them we're not an actual business. Um, we have a full-time job already. And if they ask, I tell them, he's a mechanic, I'm a teacher. Um, they know that when it snows, clearly I'm off. And, if, um, and he'll be around. And basically, I tell them, you go on a list. It's a calling list. If, if you want to be added to the list, um, basically on the day it snows, I tell them if you're on our list, um, I call in the order that you were added on. So um, I basically tell them if we have X amount of inches of snow, um, I give them an estimate based upon how many cars wide and long their driveway is. So they know this prior to being put on the list. Yep. Um, if it's, you know, for example, four to six inches, it's a certain estimation. If it's six inches, you know, to a foot, it would be this. I said, anything over that, um, we'll talk the day of the storm. And I tell them, we go to homes in order of where you are on the list. I give you about an hour heads up before we're coming to your home. And I said, we don't overload the list. I said, the one thing you can rely on with us is that we will come. I said, we do not overload the list for the sheer fact that we don't want to tell you we're not coming or we don't want to not show up. When they hear our prices, I'll be honest with you. The first thing they automatically say is, really? You know, it's more than X, Y, and Z for six inches of snow? Yes, we're not leaving the house to come to your home for less than a certain amount of money. But what that assures you is that we're actually coming. 
Um, I can't tell you how many people that are on our list that we've actually received over the years because these big companies that can't get out to them or these smaller companies whose machines break down before coming to them, that they don't have one of these guys to fix their machines, um, they haven't come and they don't even call. So these people are happy to be added to our list at the prices we're giving them because they know that we're reliable. Um, so we've actually gotten some really nice customers over yes. the years. Um, we're and strictly residential, on call, we no commercial. do not no advertise. Contract. It is like word of mouth. And literally where we did advertise years ago, people are finding our number from like, what, five years ago, yes. four years ago? We don't advertise that. I'm like, may I ask, where did you find our number from? And they're like, well, there was a post from 2014 or 2015. And we were hoping your number was still active because the Lucky. reviews were so good. Lucky Mud Mowers. All right, so hold on. So we got a couple people in the channel. Lucky Mud Mowers, you're from Rhode Island. We've been to Rhode uh, Island. So do you have snow? Hold yes. on. Madik, we'll come back to you. Madik helped us with the, with the fuses. Where are you from and yes. do you have snow? And custom wheel horse tractor. So where are you from? You have snow too. Hey, good wheel, morning. <laughs> wheel horse, I think, is here in the states. I don't know if wheel horse ever made made it across to you guys. Wheel horse is really big over here. Yes, Eric. Where are you from? And I just want to add, um, my Rhode Island friend, Lucky Seven. I just want to say, I love. I've always loved Rhode Island. Rhode, I can't speak Rhode Newport, Island. Newport. My best Newport. friend went to Brown years and years and years ago, and this past summer we fell back in love with Newport. Um, we have now since August gone back three times, and I can't wait to get him back again. There's just something we've gone to all the historical homes. Um, we the, love the history, the car museums, the car museums, the battlegrounds. Um, I just love love it over there. Are you near that area? And he's saying he's in Cumberland. Is that far from Newport? Forgive me for not knowing my way around Newport. I know it, there's there's not a lot, lot of area to cover, so I'm sorry that I don't know, but is that far? Oh, so anyway, so they know there's lakes, so we get back to it. So anyway, the snowstorm that put us on the map, right? If you go through my early channel, if you go through my early videos on the channel, it's all snowblower performance videos. So I would take videos of snowblowers in action and it would help accelerate the selling process. Not only am I selling you a machine, I can show you that this thing works and it performs a lot better than everybody else's machine because it's running a modified impeller, it's fully serviced, you know, the whole month. So the storm that put us on the map, if you guys watch my Arians 1128, it was a two part video, okay? It was this really heavy, wet, slushy snow. It was raining and snowing for hours on end. And I really waited towards the end as a stress test, okay? If you waited past a certain point, you could not use your snowboat. It was physically impossible, that's how it was. I went out with the Aryans, you know, the king of snow, and I stress tested. You guys could watch me go right down the driveway and right down the street. And you guys could see, if you guys watched the video, you could see that the street is literally water, right? And the Aryans, it's not bogging down, it's not clogging up, and it's literally throwing snow. Now, the other end of the factor is that if you guys did not take care of the snow, this is supposed to get freezing temperatures that night. So that means all this slushy snow is going to get rock hard. So you had no choice but to remove it. Now, all these, you know, other guys or landscapers out there per se, right? This is heavy, wet snow. So you're not using your snowblower. You're shoveling. That's very tired. Mm -hmm. Very, very tired. So that storm really put, you know, my wife and I on the map. And we did very good for ourselves. And we had two snowblowers. We were running the original Craftsman 928 and the other Aryans before we required more. So that's why we don't have to do any advertising anymore. Okay, people know, fact, 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 that we are not the cheapest, but we do a great job, always on time. We have never left anybody abandoned. Yeah. So back to the snowblower that I'm talking about, the Aryans with the key start, right? So <clears throat> originally, right, I want this thing to be as factory looking as possible. Obviously, if you look at the machine, if you know what a machine's supposed to look like, like some of you guys like Fearless, who's like spot on with stuff like that, and probably even Sam, right? You guys, even though you guys don't get snow, you guys probably have a very good general knowledge of what machines are well, and what no. they're supposed to Sam look like. Well, no, Sam said it snowed every five 
five years. <laughs> hey, get it when you can get it, right? So, so what happens is Aaron's comes with the light and the heated hand grips. Now that we put the Hemi 420 on there, okay, it came with one coil. That one coil, because I wanted to do an electric start so we don't have to pull anymore. Or, you know, I wanted to try and I want to keep that cool factor too. I don't know why I was always obsessed with the snowblower with key spot like a car. Don't ask me why. So got the battery box, welded it on, get everything wired up. The I ordered another coil and it was only putting out like 0.9 amps between the two of them. That's not enough to charge the battery as we're running. Um, as we're running the heated hand grips and the light. Now, do heated hand grips really mean something? Not really, because you wear good gloves. I was gonna say, I love you, but I could barely feel them through the massive gloves. But I but I have OCD <laughs> issues. If the machine's supposed to come with it, it has to. It. I, it has to. It yeah. has to have it. I, I just, I just that that's probably one of my biggest downfalls per se. Like I have to do this machine justice. Yeah. Whether it's an Arians or not. Yeah. So you know, so this Arians came this way. And we've had these machines, so I know exactly what they're supposed to be exactly like. So that wasn't sufficient enough. So what happens was I did some research, and I paid a pretty penny for it. I mean, this build cost me, you know, a fair amount. I mean, that's life. I have, I could have worse or hobbies. And I got Genset coils from a generator, and they are perfect. So I just got them installed. I got to put the video on the channel. I mean, I'm behind. So I got it wired up. And I can get the light to work, but I can't get the heated hand grips to work. It's a very simple system. But the problem is, is that we don't know the history on this machine. She is going to, um, I'm sorry. So she knew I wanted to always do a big engine on a smaller machine. Mm -hmm. So during the summer two years ago, I paid $100 for this complete POS snowblower and my plan was to actually put a v-twin on that's been my end game goal and i got the engine running it is what it is ended up doing a frame off on it and sold it that's on my intro video the red track drive so this snowblower she paid 50 bucks for it at a garage sale and they told her the engine was blown and i'm like all right well i can't get mad you it's an earrings 1128 exactly what we want and like for 50 bucks she didn't even call me she just handed the money you know no video chat you know no nothing so she has a good general understanding. This is not the first snowblower she's purchased. So this is probably be the first one that she purchased that's not running per se. So I have her trained. And when she goes to garage sales, she'll ask, you know, do you have any equipment you're looking to sell? You know, oh, we just bought a house. We're looking for this, looking for that. It's and the usual schmooze lines, you know. And I'll be honest with you. I hate pulling the chick line, you know, like. You know, they're not used to seeing a woman come up. You know, they're expecting me to buy, like, you know, the housey house items, the blender, the toaster, that crap. <laughs> um, so when, as a woman, I go up, oh, you know, I, I, I wish my husband had a good lawnmower or my husband works nights and uh, I wish we had a good snowblower so I could help him. Well, we're moving, so, and that leads to a whole other conversation I never lie, but it's just good conversation. And then the next thing, you know, the husband showing me inside his shed or the garage and could you use this? And do you need a backpack blower or does your husband need that? Oh, how expensive is that going to be? You know, you just, you play dumb a little bit. You play the game and the next thing you know, you know, you're coming home with something decent at a decent price and um, he's happy and it's usually not a still and for a hundred bucks and a POS. And, <laughs> um, so, but I saw Lucky, you're only 10 miles away from Newport. We would love to do coffee and maybe a YouTube video the next time. <laughs> that would be awesome. It's forcing me to go on vacation, perfect. So Lucky, we found this adorable little place literally right near um one of the beaches in middletown where oh, you cross right. the sea breeze where you cross right into newport like you're a minute from newport mm -hmm. and it would be like a perfect location right on the deck where we have coffee and breakfast to do a youtube so if you think we're not going to remember you i will remember you so i can't wait so Look what you need to do so what you need to do get get on my instagram right because instagram is where we're 
we're more active per se because we could do more day to day stuff and I could show what I do for a living. So get on Instagram, follow me. I mean, and we, somehow, some way, we can meet in the middle at Newport. Absolutely, you know, not a problem. Look at that, Mick. I was sitting for you, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mick, you can come anytime. You can look at my POS still blower while you're here. Um, and bring Pete with you. <laughs> we'll have a big old party. <laughs> so I got I got so I got the coils, I got everything mounted, I got everything hooked up. So I can't get the heated hand grip sword. So she purchased this at a garage sale. So I don't even know if the heated hand grip is supposed to work in the first place. But I know if I hook them directly right to the battery and put an inline fuse because the heated hand grips are on a switch, I can tell if they work or not. So I just want to try and like, you know, dumb things down for me. I am terrible with electrical work. Even though it is something as simple as just power and ground, especially on a snowblower, I still it just, it is what it is. I'll admit it. You know, I am not God's gift to any engine out there. I just work at it, get at it <laughs> until it's done. It's just electrical work. I suck. Even the guys at work, you know, break my, you know what, and they tell her too. You know, it's bad. It's bad. Electrical work, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm okay. I keep telling him, I'll be honest with you, I think he doesn't give himself enough credit. And I also want him to learn reefers too at work. He's, don't even let him play you at how smart this guy is. He never gives him, you know what he's got though? He's got ADHD. He's all over the place. He just has to like focus his mind and there's nothing this guy can't do. Um, he's a smart cookie. And I love Pete that you're going to hold Mick's hand. Will you, can, can I hold your other hand once you get here? And oh my God, I'm thinking we've got the, we could do a calendar. Lucky's not far. We'll get you. And I believe our other guy was up from Cortland. Who was my friend? Eric, are you from Cortland, right? You set up state Cortland, right? Eric 83, am I right? I'm seeing a calendar here, the 12 months of, of small engine guys. It's gonna be great. This is gonna be great. 2020. Okay, yeah, so he said he's from Cortland. Yes, this is, and you're you're getting snow, right? Are you getting snow up in Cortland? He should. I think he should yeah. have got dumped. You guys should you guys should have gotten dumped on. Lucky, are you getting snow in, in Rhode Island? I know when my, my girlfriend years back used to be in Rhode Island, you guys used to get hammered there. You guys should be getting dumped on too. Like I said, wow. we're getting the tail end of the storm. Well, you have a calendar, fun. Mick. How come I don't have a copy of it? Is Pete in the calendar? This is great. I was drunk. All right, so so all right, so lucky seven. So okay. you guys are gonna get snow. All right, so how much snow are you guys right. supposed to get? Because I'm under the presumption that everybody's getting dumped on. Once it fizzles out to Long Island, we're getting like a dusting per se. But it's only January, okay. and, it's gonna and we got February, March to go. And it's going to start at this. 1 p.m., and they say it's going to end at 8. So that's crazy. It's gonna, they're going to say it's going to snow for seven hours, and we're only going to get three inches. Because the temp's a little high, guys, here, and then it's going to go to rain. But I'm trying to tell this man, February, March, we're still going to get hit quite a bit. So we're going to be fine. Oh, Mick, this is great. This is great. Okay, so the snappy Scott. Okay, so he's from he's a, from across the pond too. So all right, so he was a, so he lives in a he gets snobby from he's from a nice area. We're in a nice area too, but the pickings for free aren't what they should be. Um, I mean, I think we could find. I think I could count on one hand how many machines we found in the garbage in our area. I mean, you would be so surprised. Here's the thing. Okay, so four inches. The area 12. we're in, um, I taught here for 11 years before we even moved here. <laughs> this area is, I'm in a barrier. We're, um, we don't belong this here. This area anymore. is old money. And the reason we were able to get this particular house, this house was notified to me when we were looking by we a parent who I we, taught in the area for. And she was like, this house didn't even hit the market yet. Ba, 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 ba. So we were able to get an in. This area is old money. Like parents leave it to their children, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you go to some of the local restaurants and they order drinks and we're like, what the heck is that? Like just order a beer or whatever. You know, he laughs at some of the guys who walk in and, and, and with their, you know, their vests on and their polo and, you know, like, look at us. We're like normal it's people. But you know what? Everyone's been very nice to us. 
We love the area. It, it, you know, the people have been good to us. Um, and we have found some really nice equipment here. <laughs> I mean, we're talking like for people sale. have yes. for sale. And don't forget, remember going to the beach one year? He found a snowblower that someone pushed to the curb. They and had what it did it mean? They had it at a garage sale. And then when the garage sale was over, no one bought it. So they put it out to the curb and we got it. That was like at infancy. I mean, it infancy. was sad. It was sad. It was like they didn't even want to bother like bringing it to a place to have it fixed, which would have cost like probably next to nothing, right? Um, Mick, you have 12 in the house. I love it. My mother was one of 13. No, no, he's saying that we have 12 people. Oh, I'm team. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you're a busy man, brother. Yes, we're 12 in the house. So excited. Um, but yeah, no, it isn't. So snobby, you're on, you're on a nice area. How did you hooked up with Mick then from, from this community then? I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so Snobby looks like he has a nice setup. Obviously, I'm in my driveway. I have a garage, but it's so filled with stuff. And if you guys see, I have to take all that stuff out to even access my toolbox. Now it's been cold lately, so I've been actually putting everything out and, and working in the garage. It's a little bit cramped, but I mean, we're working on it. It you, is what it is. The house itself has like paid for itself in the sense of like what we got the house for and all it has to offer. Um, we've re definitely reaped our investment. Um, and now once he gets the extension put on for what he needs, it's like a diamond in the rough. Um, and the schools are amazing here. Um, it's just a great area. Like our local beaches are like private beaches almost. Um, it's, it's just a beautiful place to be. And we're so happy here. Like we can walk to the local restaurants, people in town, like they know your name, like in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I know except sometimes that's not except good. Except for the small engine repair shop. Except the small engine repair um, shop. And, and again, we've got some great clientele for snow removal around here because in a nice area, nobody wants to touch their own snow. So we will. So um, Madik was telling me about the fuses. He's actually from Australia. Oh my God, Madik, my first pen pal as a little girl was from Australia. It's a beautiful place. Welcome. So I was asking him about the wildfires. Because over here in the States, oh. they're telling us they arrested dozens of people who, okay. uh, they were saying that the fire started with arson. And people kept just letting fires and fires and okay. fires. And then obviously, you know, with climate change and mm -hmm. just dry, petrified wood, that this became like, you know, it accelerated to bigger uh, than what it is. And he was saying that it is fake news. There was a bit of arson, but nowhere near what the media outs are pushing. Okay. okay. Madik, is your family, is everybody okay where you are? Are you okay? Yeah, we, we were watching a couple of videos, sorry to hear. you know, on the news and stuff like that. I mean, the news here, here in the States is pretty poor. It is pretty loud. Um, believe it or not, we like to watch BBC. Uh, we feel that uh, it's pretty upfront and honest. Once in a blue moon, um, I used to watch Al Jazeera, but then I don't know why they kind of like phase that out here. So we have to try and find like a link to uh, to uh, watch that. Oh wow! So Mick Snobby's your elder brother. So Mick, you must be like what, like my age, like oh, turning he's your forty? Older brother? Wait, he said that's his brother. Did I miss that? <laughs> and Snobby oh. has a Bentley. Are you like a rapper on the side? <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. Snobby, have, are, do you do nothing but small engine repair or have you, how have you become so comfortable in life? I'm curious. May I ask that? So you're talking about the, the smoke, right? So we heard that you guys got a lot of rain and apparently that's supposed to help everything out and the fires have almost are good to go for weeks, 40 degrees off rain. Okay. <laughs> Actually, it feels like it's getting warmer out now. Thank you. So today. Wow, Madik, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. So, are, so, so, are you guys really brothers, or are you, or are you guys, you know, like I have brothers from another mother? Are you guys really, really, you know, because it's hard to tell because you know, Mick, uh, you know, I can't talk. Huh? Oh, and then Dusty Vaughn, I'm Snobby's wife. <laughs> Hi, Dusty Vaughn. How are you? Because, you know, Mick has no hair. Snobby's got plenty of hair. Okay. Aww, Aww. There's nothing wrong with someone not having <laughs> hair. So who's, Hair is overrated. So who was mechanically inclined first? You 
or Snobby. Well, Snobby's the older brother, so technically by trade, he should be mechanically inclined. So I have an older brother, and he is not mechanically, he's not inclined to Are you anything. showing off your hair now, or what little you have left? Do you believe this man is growing a mullet? Please, please tell him <laughs> to stop. Can they see it? It's only been like, I'm a mullet. But his hair here. is curly, so now it's going like bushy. It's not mullet-like. <laughs> it's scary. Aw, cool oh, he got all the hair and all the good looks. Well, Dusty Blonde is a beautiful woman, so she has to have a, a very handsome man with her. But Mick, you're you're a good-looking man too. Don't don't give yourself some more credit than that. But Pete, Pete, Pete is our looker here, so you're rolling with a good-looking crowd. All right, guys. So we're we're gonna sign off. We have uh, we have some homework to do. Right, I have to get my video up for Snowblower Sunday. That's probably going to be my supercharged Arians. And somehow, some way, I have to figure out how to get this stream off of private onto live, so I could start doing like what Mick does. You know, Mick can go on and even restore, restore. He's another good guy too. Uh, Mick, a mullet? No, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's hard. Oh, to, my hair's not done, but it's, it's so business bad. in the front, and then it's hard to see. Is it party in the back? It's not going to be a mullet, though. His hair is naturally curly, so it literally it. is, like, puffing <laughs> out. <laughs> and we had an you event to go to, and he, like, greased it down with, like, hair gel. And he wants me to buy a straightener to straighten it, but I, I don't have a straightener. Do my, my hair, hair is naturally just straight, straight like... Oh, please, guys, please help me out. Like, I'll make do my him, hair and then make we can him get a nice haircut again. I, I like a nice haircut. Whatever happened to like happy wife? <laughs> I told him I'll do all the nice things if you get a haircut again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mick, oh, God. You're so, not helping me. <laughs> so, Mick, go on YouTube, right? And oh. check out this. Check out this. Forget his music. I mean, if you want to listen to his music and laugh because it's comicable. Look up this guy called Riff Raff. Oh, please. Riff Raff. Do I'm yourself sorry. a favor. You can't erase the images, Nick, once you look up this guy. It's not possible. Those are going to be my mullet goals. <laughs> so the mullet oh started. My. So quick I miss. So the mullet started is because I'm starting to lose my hair, which is fine. I don't care. I want to shave my head. And she won't let me shave my head. So I went to the drawing board and, and haircuts for 500s that people will hate oh and that she will say, okay, shave your head. Mullet came right up to mine. So I'll she's never been holding... hate anything about you because I love you. And I mean, I love you. You're adorable. <laughs> and Dusty Blonde, I'm sure his wife is beautiful too. You're a beautiful woman too. Just a good looking group of people. I love it. I seen your friend. Don't go there. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. I appreciate the support. <laughs> yeah, so so we're gonna appreciate it. Um, it's been an hour, fantastic. We we'll definitely do this again. I, I mean, I'm really sorry. I wanted the features, a couple of guys' builds. So once we get that sorted out, you know, we're gonna yeah. do that because I'm always showing you my builds, whether it's spray and pray, restyle restoration, quick flip, e e easy money. We're gonna have to do this. Um, uh, backpack blower that literally. I mean, this thing was thrown off a cliff. I don't. I don't want to hear none of that. So uh, I better sell this the snow blower today to redeem myself. So, so, so we'll leave on we'll leave on a positive note. So even though you know she got the backpack blow for a hundred bucks, right? That thing is a three hundred dollar blower all day long, and it's a backpack blower. Backpack blows for us are quick, easy. It's very it's very rare for us to have a backpack blower for sale for like longer than a week. Mm -hmm. No matter what season we're in, there's always every anybody's looking for a nice high quality backpack blower. Don't go over Frank Farmhouse. Oh, you'll find out. Oh, you'll find out. That, that that's mullet, glasses, and bandana. Oh my god. <laughs> and, and a lot of neon. And a lot of neon. Pete, are you single? <laughs> oh. So we'll leave it at that. I mean, it's an absolute pleasure. So oh, obviously man, you're killing me. So obviously I have my work cut out for myself. We're definitely gonna check out StreamYard. I mean, OBS, I've spent so much time on it last night. I had everything lined up to be this perfect chat, but then I don't know how to get it off of private. So 
We'll figure that out. We'll check our stream yard okay. and uh, we'll go from there. So hopefully, all right, listen, we're going to get snow, one, three inches, supposed to get six inches during the week. Pray for us that we absolutely get dumped on. I don't yeah, even care snow, if we're doing snow, snow removal. Snow. I am going to take my snow blowers and I am going to go up and down the block and we're going to have Pick up gravel. We're going to have tons and tons of video footage. Especially, I really want to see what happens with the supercharged Aryans. I think it's going to have a weak point, which is fine because I can fix it, but I won't know until the very end. So for you guys that are getting tons of snow, have tons of fun. Get at me on Instagram. Post some videos. Get me jealous because last week during the week, oh, she caught me watching videos on the channel. You know, I had the, the TV. I was watching old snowblower videos on the channel, and I, I stumbled across a, a couple of people blowing snow, and we became friends, whatever. So anyway, so uh, yeah, pray for snow. Um, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and an even better week. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys during the weekend. Hopefully by Great Saturday. Great to meet you too, Snobby. The I next, trust you, Blonde. Yes, the next live we're going to do, we'll have everything sorted out, and we're going to start having member builds featured on the channel. All right, thanks again. Have a wonderful week, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Later, guys. Later.